Hello and welcome. I'm so happy you are here with us for this episode of Journey of the Master podcast. I'm so excited for today's conversation. Are you ready for acceleration and momentum in your life? Are you ready for new beginnings? It is definitely the time for us to open to new beginnings, momentum, and acceleration in our life. So we are going to celebrate and usher it in together today. So hello. Wow. Lots of people on the on the live call today and lots of comments. Hello from New Zealand. Oh my goodness. Uh, Pom. Pomo, Pom Pomo Beach. Awesome. Uh, I think that's in Florida because I think I know she's in Florida. Um, British Columbia, Southern California, Canada, Miami, Michigan. Hello. Palm Desert, Wisconsin, Auckland, Charlotte, Sedona. Wow. All over the world. We're so happy you are here. I love these live calls. I love the journey of the podcast series. We get to cover so many things that are near and dear to my heart. And one of those things is really opening up to new opportunities, new beginnings. It may be a result of something that you have been excited about and passionate about. It may some be something that comes completely out of the blue, but either way, it is navigating the waves of acceleration and momentum in our life. We're going to talk about how to really prepare, how to stay in your power and aligned as you experience momentum and acceleration, and how to welcome in new beginnings in your life. So thank you for being here. If you are on live and you do have a question, please type it into the comments and the team here will put it in the, the chat so I can see your comments. I love your great questions. You are always contributing to the expansion of this conversation. So um, if you're part of our community, you probably know that we have a new live channeled online course beginning on March 21st, 2024 called stillness, the access point to acceleration. So this theme of acceleration is really coming up uh, often and repeatedly. Time for acceleration. It's time for momentum. It's time for new beginnings. As we're recording this live, it's March of 2024, and we are just, I believe, one day from the spring equinox celebrating the ushering in of spring. Now, I know we have a lot of people in our community that are in the Southern Hemisphere, and you're in a little bit time, different time of year, but I truly think that this time, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, is a huge time for momentum in our lives. If you're heading into springtime, what do we tend to think about? more long sunny days, more opportunities for creativity and play and fun. We think about the buds on the trees. We think about the, the blossoming of the flowers. So many things in nature reminding us that this is a time for new beginnings. You also see the acceleration everywhere. And I think it is a big part of the energy of this time. We are streaming this live on YouTube, which is uh, one place where you can find our Journey of the Podcast episodes. You can also find them on your favorite podcast platform. But if you're like me, what I see a lot of times when I hop on to YouTube is the are these incredible uh, uh, tarot readers and those who are talking about horoscopes and talking about different things for different signs. And a lot of times they're telling us, right, what's kind of lined up in the stars. And that's awesome. And when we can line ourselves up with that, which we want to experience, and of course, the sun and the moon and the stars are all supporting us in doing that. It's like the perfect trifecta. It's like the uh, eye of the storm, but the storm of love and joy and passion and abundance and well-being. So um, we're excited about talking about that a little bit more. Uh, there's actually a question here about the council's insights for the upcoming eclipse. We are going to have a live, if you're on live, channeled message. If you're not on live, it was recorded live channeled message from the council today. So be sure to stay tuned for that. That will be at the end of the call. 
We also have a question about my next book coming out. Uh, so my first book was The Wisdom of the Council. My second book was The Dream, The Journey, Eternity, and God, co-authored with New York Times bestselling author Mike Dooley. These are both published by Hay House. If you are catching this live and you are going to the I Can Do It conference in Phoenix this coming weekend, March 2024, I'm so thrilled. It is a dream come true for me to be presenting at the I Can Do It conference. So I'm so excited about that. My third book, which is You Are a Channel, which is for every single one of you to open up to your channeled connection to source to receive messages from your higher self, your loved ones on the other side, your own council collective and team that is always supporting you. That book will be released on July 3rd, 2024. July 3rd, 2024. You can pre-order your copy now. I'm just finishing my fourth book, which uh, I'm super excited about. We'll be sharing soon and a fifth book in the works. So thank you to everyone in our community who buys our books, buys our audio books, supports this. Uh, it, It is so much appreciated to know that this incredible work is getting out in the world. If anyone has ever written a book, I'll tell you, I never walk by a book on a bookshelf again without almost wanting to to take a minute and just be like, oh, thank you, thank you, because I know how much, how much love, how much energy, and how much time goes into creating the book that you see on the shelf. And uh, as I'm in the midst of completing my fourth book right now, I can tell you um, there is so much energy and so much love that goes into every single one of these books. So thank you for being part of our community and thank you for supporting um, the wonderful work that we put in the world. So acceleration. So when you think about acceleration, it's the increase of your speed. It's the increase of your rate or your speed. We think about it as acceleration also as a a rate of change. So we're really looking at how do we speed up the change. And as the council tells us, think about it not so much as navigating change or the rate of change, but think about it as navigating through creation. So think about the acceleration of creation and creativity in your life. Think about the acceleration of creating in the new whatever that means for you. Maybe you're feeling really called to create a deeper relationship with your body and a greater sense of well-being. I know I've really been feeling this. I I live in a in a place where it's quite warm and beautiful all year long, but I know many of our friends in the the Midwest or in the north are coming out of winter. You're getting ready for summer. And you're also getting your body ready for this time of creation, acceleration, momentum, and new beginnings. And that may be very different than what you have ever experienced as well-being in your body before. And as we are continuing through this process of raising our vibration, moving through ascension, ascension, Our bodies are changing, evolving, expanding, and it's an opportunity to check back in with your body. I, uh, at many times in my life, I have been into exercise and running and yoga and weightlifting and different things, but take time to check in with your body. I know my message from my body when I tuned in about what can my I best do to support my own body through this time of acceleration and momentum and new beginnings The thing that came to me is yoga, which is not something that I tend to do every day. I'm more of a runner, um, but it really came up for me strongly. And I have been feeling the benefits of listening to my body, of what would be most supportive to my body in this time of acceleration, momentum, and new beginnings. So that might be the first place that you want to start is tune into your body as you are preparing for this acceleration in your life, this rate of creation that is speeding up. What can you do to best support your body? Again, I go back to stillness. And at first, stillness may very well mean sitting still, closing your eyes, taking some deep breaths, and connecting in to that source energy of all that is in the moment. When the council first started talking about stillness, 
at first, as you become more aware, sometimes you get to that more aware state by literally stopping altogether, closing your eyes and taking some deep breaths. As you practice that, you find that you can come into those deep breaths no matter what you're doing. And then you start to notice that you can not only find that place of stillness, those deep conscious intentional breaths, but that connection to all that is, even when you're doing the things that you love to do or enjoy to do, or you're driving your car to do errands, those types of things. First step for practicing stillness, especially when you really want to get in tune to your body, is close your eyes, take three deep breaths, go from your head into your heart and really feel your connection to all that is in this moment. Feel your awareness go beyond the outline of your body. Feel your connection to everything and all that is. The feeling I have when I come into that place of stillness is that I am connected to everything. I'm in that state of oneness. You can feel that state of oneness no matter what you're doing. And stillness is the access point to acceleration, manifestation, transformation, true creation, and realization. It is the place where you really access all of your power in the moment. And if you think about coming into that place of oneness, not only are you in a deeper connection with your body, not only are you co-creating and receiving guidance from the intelligence that is every cell in your body, you are also expanding the force field of consciousness that you are. We think we are these bodies. We think we are these bodies that are sitting here in this chair and that's all that we are. It's all contained within this body, right? But as you raise your vibration, you expand the force field of consciousness that you are. As you come into greater states of stillness and come into that oneness with all that is, you are expanding the force field of consciousness that is you. Not only are you accessing acceleration in that moment and really supporting momentum and new beginnings in your life, but you are removing the illusion of separation between you and anything in your life. So not only can you allow the momentum, but you can really start to receive it and that acceleration in your life. So a question here, what does the council suggest is the best way to overcome resistance to this beautiful acceleration and momentum? So I find personally that sometimes we ask for acceleration in our life. We ask for new beginnings. We ask for momentum. We ask for manifestation. We ask for more and bigger. And then it shows up. And we get a little bit uncomfortable because it's not just the status quo anymore. Things are speeding up. Things are happening, right? And as much as we want it, sometimes we might create that resistance about it. First off, don't judge yourself for that. Love yourself for that. Love yourself for even being aware that you're feeling some resistance. That is mastery. That is truly being a conscious, aware person. If you are aware that you're feeling some resistance, that's important. Give yourself some credit for that. Ask yourself, what is the resistance about? In most cases, you're giving your power away to something right? You have something new coming in, some momentum coming in around something, some acceleration coming in, but you still have an old story. And that old story might tell you, oh, I'm not ready for that. I'm not good enough. These great new beginnings often don't work out, whatever your story is, right? Don't judge it. What is this resistance about? All these great things are starting to happen. What is that resistance about? The other thing I will tell you, one of the most powerful things that the council says about this is even when your biggest dreams show up, even when the new beginnings and the acceleration and the momentum is taking you right into the realization of your biggest dreams come true, slow down, come back into that stillness. We access stillness to bring forth acceleration, manifestation, transformation, all of these things in our life. 
and continue to find that stillness, even when that acceleration shows up, even when that momentum shows up. Don't make it any more difficult than stop, take some deep breaths, close your eyes if it feels good to you, go from your head down into your heart and feel your connection to all that is. Feel into that state of oneness. Feel your own expansion in the moment. And then let the next step come to you. Let the next step come to you. Follow the energy, let the light guide the way, which means if you are fully aligned in this moment, you're experiencing that, that oneness with all that is, you're focused on what brings you joy, you're feeling the expansion, you're in a knowing of your own worthiness and the love that you are. And the guidance comes up to call a particular person or to go to a particular place, or to research something in particular. The next step will come to you. It will come to you if you follow the energy and let the light guide the way for you. So I love this question, and I, I see you for already being aware and conscious enough to recognize that there is some momentum. Continue to stay in that conscious, aware place and observe what comes up for you. And it is not about entangling with the old story. It is about being conscious and present in a place of stillness within you and observing what it's, what's coming up for you, observing what that resistance is about. Okay, I hope that was helpful. So let's go back to acceleration momentum. We talked about our bodies, getting our bodies ready for that acceleration and momentum and new beginnings. And then let's talk about the acceleration of abundance in your life. So I preface this with accelerating the abundance because you already are abundant. And I think one of the best times to experience that abundance is this time of spring, is I think any of the equinoxes timeframes. I know fall is sometimes a time of harvest for us, but it is these opportunities to really remind yourself to look at all the abundance that you do have. Look at all the abundance that you do have. Little things like running water. So I have a well on my property and yesterday I went to turn the water on and there was no running water. We are of the most abundant people on earth to have running water in our home, to go to the faucet and turn, turn it on and have water coming out. Now, luckily my well fails over to the city water. So we were able to just shift it over and water's flowing again, but that's abundance. If you want to tune in to that place of stillness and abundance and, and connection with all that is, water is a really powerful way. Either go watch or sit by the side of a river or a stream or a lake or the ocean and just really take in the power of water and how it reflects to us our abundance. Maybe you live in a place that has a lot of forests or a lot of trees. Go out in nature. And one of my favorite things that the council taught years ago, take one tree, any tree, and start to count the leaves on the trees. If it's springtime where you are, maybe you're counting the buds on the tree. But take any tree and just start to count how many leaves are on that tree. And they said, what if leaves were our new form of abundance? What if instead of dollars, we exchanged leaves on a tree, things that are, come from nature, which is what exchanging of currency originally started as. We originally traded cattle and sheep and chickens and those types of things for uh, resources that people needed. Then people exchanged uh, coins, gold, those types of things. But if you really think about it, all of our abundance actually comes from something in nature, right? Think about that in the form of leaves. And if you start to count, I know in my experience, I've done this exercise many times, I can take the trees in my front yard and start to count the leaves. They have leaves all year round. And I am barely on, uh, to one branch and I'm at a thousand leaves, right? If you were to think about the leaves on the tree, each being uh, a symbol of a dollar, right? You have abundance all around you, right? And if we just took that abundance when we needed it, right? 
and knowing there would always be more. We live in this cycle of what abundance really is, which is an energetic exchange. Now, the flip side is also true, right? If you took all the leaves off the trees and tried to store them away, <laughs> you might find that uh, they don't last very long. They disintegrate, right? And so if we can start to shift our concept of abundance to the flow of nature, the abundance of nature, the reminder all around us of how abundant nature is, we get to really align to that flow, which naturally brings forth acceleration, momentum, and reminds us that new beginnings are all around us happening all the time. If you want more new beginnings in your life, you might be somewhat specific about what that is. I want a new beginning in this area of my life, right? Let every single example that you come across all day long be not only a reminder, but proof to you that your own new beginnings are already in motion all around you, happening as you speak, right? Let any little thing, someone tells you, oh, they got a new job. Oh, they have a new grandchild. Take a moment and go, oh, look at new beginnings. New beginnings are showing up everywhere in my life. And you start to harness that energy that opens you up for the new beginnings that are here and available for you as well. So what is the council's guidance on shifting into a state of abundance and seeing and experiencing it in physical reality? I think this is... Um, Again, back to what we just talked about in in this exercise, and it really is um, a fun game to play with yourself. Go out in nature and start with a tree and just start to count the leaves on the tree and imagine that those are dollars that are there available to you. One of the other things I love to do, I call it the abundance game. If you think about abundance and prosperity, it's an energetic exchange. Abundance is a plentiful supply. You have a plentiful supply of everything you need and more. Money, time, resources, opportunities, love, connections, uh, all sorts of things, right? It's abundance of lots of things, right? You can think of someone that might have a lot of money, but they never have time to do what they want. I was one of those people. I, In the corporate world, I, I worked all the time and I was saving all this money, but I never had I really wasn't abundant because I didn't have the time or I didn't believe I had the time to do what I wanted to do, right? So part of abundance is money, resources, time, opportunities, connections, love. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's friendships for you. So start by identifying where you are abundant. And you might go, well, I have a lot of friends. I'm one of those people that has a lot of friends. And you think about all the friends you have. You think about the wonderful times you have. You think about the, the amazing opportunities that come from that, the joy that comes from that. You're abundant in friendship. Maybe you have a lot of animals in your life. Maybe you live in a place where there's a lot of um, animals in nature around you. Maybe you have a lot of birds. Maybe you live in a place where you get a lot of butterflies or birds or uh, things this time of year, right? What are you abundant in? And Know that any amount of money that you have is abundant. And being in that awareness of the abundance that you do have and aligning to that state of abundance, you get more of what you are. Not what you want, not what you think you need. You get more of what you are. So the more you know you are abundant, you, the more you align to that place of abundance, the more you draw more and more and more abundance to you. If you're looking at your reality and saying, oh, I don't have any abundance, then no matter how it shows up, you're not going to be able to receive it. You may not even be able to be aware of it or perceive it. And so start to shift to that state of abundance and you will accelerate the abundance. You will accelerate your opportunities and a whole lot of new things can start showing up in your life in the form of maybe some of those new beginnings. So momentum is really uh, the speed of an object in motion, right? Um, it's more of a rate of development, right? The speed in motion of an object. And so you are that object. And whatever it is that you are aligning to that is moving into your experience is likely also some form of object, 
right? So as you are elevating your own vibration, your own frequency, your own awareness, you're living in these states of abundance and well-being and love and joy, you really are accelerating this being that you are and your body and yourself, right? So sometimes the momentum is you and you may feel like, oh, I don't have as much energy as I used to have or something like that, right? And I encourage you to really be aware of that and step back for a second and observe that and really open up. What if this is the greatest time of momentum and new beginnings and acceleration that you've ever experienced? What if this is your time, your year? What if you are about ready to step into more momentum than you've ever experienced before and new beginnings in areas of your life that really expand all that is possible for you? When you start to let yourself perceive that, you start to draw to you not only new beginnings, but you start to increase your own momentum, your own momentum forward. So I think one other thing I would, I would say here is what are you in motion to, right? We talk about stillness and stillness is really important. Stillness is everything, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're sitting still with your eyes closed. It's an alignment to oneness. It is a energy of not needing, not wanting, not pushing, not forcing, not efforting, not trying to figure it out, not in lack of, not frustrated, not waiting, not trying. It's the exact opposite of all of that. It's an ultimate state of being. And it is that access point to acceleration. It is that access point to momentum. And what are you in motion to? What do you love? What brings you joy? What are you excited about? If you, for example, are someone who feels called to write a book and so you're really passionate about it, you really want to have that experience, you're excited about it, you don't know where to begin, you don't have any contacts, you don't know what to do, find some way in this day to be in motion to that. Maybe you know someone who's written a book take them to coffee, take them to tea. Hey, I want to learn from you what you learned about writing a book. I'm interested in writing a book. Can I talk to you for 15 minutes about what your experience was? Right. Or we had a wonderful, um, master's class member. We have an amazing community called our advanced master's class program where we meet live every single Wednesday. We have the most incredible community. We do community calls as well. If you're looking for a community, and looking for more, the master's class advanced program is a great place to start. People say, well, I don't know if I'm a master. You, you are. <laughs> and if you are here listening to this, it's really about being master of your thoughts, your reality, the life you're living. It is about working in perfect harmony with source, divine, your higher self. It's not master over any other. It's about really understanding that you are a master, you are here to create your reality. You are powerful and you are free. And it is really about stepping fully into all of the wisdom, all of the energy that is your energy, that is your wisdom. That's a master. And I assure you, if you're drawn to things like this, you are. Uh, then people often ask, well, I don't know if I'm advanced, right? Advanced just is uh, a more advanced um opportunity to be part of our weekly calls, to be part of our community, uh, someone who's looking for more. So hopefully that answers some questions. So uh, being in motion too, right? If we had a wonderful woman in our master's class community that was always wanted to volunteer at this horse sanctuary. And she thought, well, I'm going to have more time, more money when I get these things done. And after hearing some conversations that we shared in our community about this, she decided to choose that that's really what she was passionate about. That's what really brought her joy. And even if it could only be an hour a week or two hours a week, she was going to go to that animal sanctuary or horse sanctuary and volunteer. That's getting in motion too. 
right? Uh, if you really want to start hiking more, right? Maybe you only have a half an hour, right? But you, you go and you hike for half an hour. You get in motion too, right? Maybe you are interested in starting your own business. You listen to a YouTube video on starting your own business. That is you getting in motion too. Instead of sitting here and going, I can't do that. I don't know where to start. I don't know what I should be doing. What are you passionate about? What are you excited about? What brings you joy? What experience would be fun for you to have? Part of allowing and really getting in alignment to acceleration, momentum, new beginnings is you knowing that you are worthy enough to get in motion to those things that bring you joy, that are, you're passionate about, that you love, that you want to have an experience of. And you may have no idea how that's all going to unfold, but find some way to get in motion to it and start to experience that acceleration and momentum and start to experience those new beginnings. It's not a passive thing. Stillness is not a passive thing. Stillness is a passionate thing. Stillness is about you're, you're passionate about your connection to source and all that is and oneness and the power of what's possible, that anything is possible energy. You're passionate about this journey of becoming and realization. You're passionate about living your purpose. You're passionate about loving your life and living fully and being all that you are. So stillness may very well be at times a slowing down, a getting quiet, a sitting still, a closing your eyes, taking deep breaths, going from your head into your heart. It may be meditation. It may be yoga. It may be those forms of really going within. And it may be literally experiencing the most incredible acceleration and momentum you ever have while also still in a place of stillness in your power, in the moment, connected to all that is, knowing it's all within you, knowing that reality moves through you, knowing that your destiny comes to you, knowing that you are powerful and you are drawing to you the next perfect step. You are drawing to you those new beginnings, but you do get into motion for those things. Um, I, we have a wonderful person in our community that was feeling like they wanted more. They wanted some new beginnings in their life. They, they had a little extra time in the evenings. And this person was a, a very successful um, uh, in the corporate world. This person is very successful in their new business now and yet found that they had some additional time and, and felt called to something more. And so they started working part-time at a place that they loved, a place that they went for to recreationally. Um, I, I can think of actually several examples of this. Um, I have a really good friend who has her own business, loves it. Um, there's a lot to it, right? And one of the things she's always loved doing was waitressing. So she got a job waitressing at a recreational place that she always loved to go to, this lake and this um, amazing place. And she loves it. She, she gets to be there. She loves what she's doing. Well, it's opened up a whole lot of opportunities to her, new people that she met, new experiences that came of, as a part of that. The person I mentioned earlier went and started working part-time at the gym that they worked out at and met an amazing new connection almost immediately after they started working there. So sometimes you feel called to a hobby, a part-time job. You feel called to um, explore starting a business. Whatever it is that you want to do, there's probably someone somewhere, right? It's that whole six degrees of separation. I would say it's probably one degree of separation, maybe two degrees of separation. If there's anything that you want to experience, something that you go, oh, that would be so fun, or I'm really passionate about that, or I'm really excited about that. Somewhere in your life, there is a connection to someone who has done that, who likely knows how blessed they are to have that experience and loves what they do and they're passionate about it. So to be able to spend 15 or 20 minutes with someone who's equally as interested or passionate about it can be a very rewarding per very rewarding for the person on the other side of that experience too. So 
maybe you feel called to start doing retreats and putting on your own retreats. I bet there's someone you know that is already doing that or has already done that. If you're thinking about starting a coaching business, I bet you know someone somewhere who has done that. So maybe the next step in that momentum and that acceleration and that movement forward is you reaching out to that person or you exploring in some way how you can start to have experiences like you want to have right now. Anything is possible, truly. Anything is possible for you. And I think this is the most powerful time for acceleration, momentum, new beginnings. You get to choose it. You get to draw those experiences to you. You get to elevate your own vibration, your own frequency, and find that place of stillness that connects you to all that is to that place of oneness that draws all of that to you. So I hope this is all making sense to you. Um, loving the comments. Thank you so much. Um, I share my abundance every time I pay a bill, uh, Ramona says, for services. I receive every time I buy lunch for a friend, et cetera. In so many ways, my abundance all around me and all that I am. Gratitude and thanks. Um, I love this example. So if we go back to abundance is an energetic exchange. Abundance and prosperity is an energetic exchange. And again, where it came from originally is exchanging livestock for resources and things that we needed. And then we started exchanging gold and coins and, and precious metals, uh, gems, jewels, those types of things. Now we have you know money that is our form of exchange, right? But it is all energy. And so Ramona hit it on the head here, the abundance game. When you go into a grocery for, store, for example, number one, someone had to pave the parking lot that you're parking in. If you've ever seen people paving a parking lot, uh, there's a lot of energy that goes into every single person that is part of paving that parking lot. You're receiving the energy of driving into and parking in a paved parking lot. Somebody built that grocery store or that building you're going into Someone had to buy it. Someone had to get the loan to afford it or take the money that they had received from the work that they had done to buy it. Someone had to get up at three o'clock in the morning and drive to that grocery store to turn the lights on. And someone had to stock those shelves. And someone who was stocking those shelves with the fruit or produce or vegetables, someone had to grow those vegetables. Someone had to pick those vegetables. Someone had to put those vegetables on a truck and drive them to the grocery store and pack them and unpack them, right? Um, when you go into a restaurant, someone washed that tablecloth. Someone had to wash those plates and someone had to prepare that food and chop those vegetables and cook that food. And someone has to wash those dishes after you're done, right? Someone's waiting on your table. There's so much abundance everywhere. When you think about and fully receive the energetic exchange all day, right? When you're paying a bill, and I love what Ramona said here, for example, if you're paying your internet bill, right? It is an energetic exchange for you to get on to video with anyone anywhere in the world, to access videos that have been produced from people anywhere in the world, to get on your email, to get on YouTube, to watch funny videos of kitties and puppies, right? Um, it, it, it connects us to the whole world. And so what are you paying for when you're paying your internet bill? You're paying for a connection to the whole world and all the wisdom and information and knowledge that has been gathered. When you're paying your electricity bill, right? What happens when the power goes out in your house? You're like, oh man, my hairdryer doesn't work. My toaster doesn't work. My internet doesn't work. My TV doesn't work, right? Electricity, when you're paying that electricity bill, you are paying for energy that flows into your house and energy that allows you to use all of these appliances and things that you have or heat your house, right? Uh, or turn the lights on. Just think about all this stuff when you're paying your bills, how truly abundant you are. If you take a moment, you can literally feel your whole being shift in that state of abundance because you are, you really are. 
Um, there was a question about, let's see, um, how do I, how do I know if I am moving forward on my path, if every day feels the same and seems to be the same, do something different. If you feel like every day is the same, do something different. Find something different to do today. I, I have to remind myself of this one really often because sometimes you don't see how much your life has changed because every day seems the same. But every day you are expanding. You are becoming more. You are becoming more of all that you are. You are on the journey of becoming. And in the moment, if you will look back at how far you've come, really look back at how far you've come. Sometimes it's as simple as, oh, you know that thing that used to bug me? It doesn't bug me anymore. Oh, that thing that used to trigger me? It doesn't trigger me anymore. Because you are moving forward. You are elevating your consciousness. You are elevating your vibration. You're elevating your frequency. You're moving more fully into all of the wisdom that is your own mastery. So sometimes it helps to take a moment and just see how far you've come. Go back in your phone. You know, we have these amazing phones now of all these apps. You can go back into your phone and you can literally search by the photos you took 10 years ago. Go back and look at how far you've come. Look at all the blessings along the way. Look at the adventures you've had. Look at how you've evolved. And find some way today to do something different than you do every other day. If you normally exercise in the morning, maybe instead of going to the gym in the morning, you go for a walk. Or maybe you go run errands in the morning and you decide to exercise in the evening. Here's an interesting thing. I bring this one up because it actually happened to me. I, I was always this person that did the same thing every day in the same way, pretty much at the same time. And this particular question came up in one of our calls with the council, and this was their answer to someone. And so it was a little bit, I had to go, can I really do that? Can I, is it okay? Can I, can I not work out in the morning and go try some other time? So I didn't, I didn't work out in the morning and I went, oh, this is different. Instead, I went and did something that I normally do in the afternoon, which I have horses. I normally ride them in the afternoon. And so instead, that particular morning, I went and rode my horses in the morning and I went to the gym in the afternoon and or late afternoon. And I saw totally different people at the gym. I met totally different people. I had a totally different experience when I went to ride my horse because there was different people that were at the stables at that time of the day that I didn't even know because I don't go at that time of the day. So maybe it's as simple as just flipping around some of the things that you do in your day. Maybe it's driving a different way. Maybe it's a little bit longer. Um, for example, I always take a particular way to get to the stable where my horses are in training. And there's another way to go, but it's a little bit longer. One day I took that way. And I had the most amazing experience seeing the most beautiful rainbow because I went a different way. And so if you want to move forward, if you want to invite in even the simplest little magical moments or miracles like seeing a rainbow or feeling more of that energy of new beginnings, do something new, do something different. Find some little thing in your day that you switch around. Maybe you go to a coffee shop. You've, I, I'm not one of those people that wake up in the morning and go sit and work at the coffee shop. But I see people doing that sometimes. One day I um, went to the coffee shop. I had a friend in town. I said, well, let's go to the coffee shop. So we went and took our computers and went and worked at the coffee shop. And it was such a cool experience. I, I learned a whole lot of things that I didn't know about um, the little town that I lived in because this particular coffee shop had all these really cool photos and stories. I met new people. So sometimes just doing something different in your day is opening you up to the new beginnings that have always been there and always waiting for you, right? So play around with that. You know, maybe your partner usually drops your children off in the morning at school and you pick them up in the afternoon. Maybe you switch it around for a week. Maybe you try taking them in the morning and he picks them up in the afternoon or she picks them up in the afternoon. You know, try, have fun with this, right? Have some fun with this new beginnings and getting yourself into the energy 
of acceleration, momentum, and new beginnings. So um, I hope that was helpful. One last quick question, and then we'll bring the council on. Can you please share the council's insight on healing pets? My opinion is pets are uh, divine souls, uh, spiritual beings, just like we are. They're here on their own journey, just like we are. They are sentient beings, just like we are. They are masters. Oh my goodness, they are masters. And just like we all go through our own journeys at different times, sometimes your animal is not experiencing its ultimate well-being. The most important thing you can do is be in a state of love, uh, not to be in a state of fear about it, but really understanding that the vibration and the frequency you're in when you're with your animal is positively contributing to your animal. So if you get yourself in that place of aligning to your own well-being, knowing that the highest truth of your beloved pet is also their state of freedom, well-being, um, running free, playing in their healthiest, happiest body, right? You aligning to the energy of well-being within yourself, the energy of joy within yourself, the energy of love within yourself, they feel that, I think, sometimes so much stronger than we ever know. So you being in that state of peace, joy, well-being, love, when you're around your animal is the most supportive thing that you can do for them in their own healing process. And then tune in, you know, you may feel a sense of guidance of something that could help your animal or be supportive. Um, you may, you know, this might not be your particular circumstance, but we've had lots of questions over the years of people who know that their animals are getting ready to transition, right? Be in that state of absolute love, appreciation for your journey with them, for the love that they are, knowing that they are on their journey, knowing that they are divine beings as well. Your energy, where you are, what you're feeling is what's contributing to their experience. So um, you have a lot of power in that. Okay, let's bring the council in for a quick message. Again, join me for Stillness, the access point to acceleration starting live on March 21st, 2024. If you're catching this sometime in the future, you can always join the course at any time. Uh, you can find out more at sarahlandon.com. We're also posting the link. You can also find it down in the comments. If you're catching this sometime in the future, that course is available on our website, Stillness, the access point to acceleration. I am excited. Oh, every course we do just expands upon all that has come before it and takes us to a whole new level. So I'm really excited about Stillness, the access point to acceleration momentum, new beginnings, manifestation, true creation, realization. Oh, the power instill this. So here we go. I'm going to bring in the council. If you're new to me or my channel or the council, I'm just going to close my eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. The council will come through. It is really about tuning in to this collective of higher consciousness that is really available to all of us. Um, I've just done this so many times uh, that it's very easy and natural for me. My eyes are pretty much closed and you know my voice changes a little bit, the cadence of my voice. Just feel for the energy of it. If you're not sure if you believe in channeling or you don't quite understand what's going on, don't worry about it. Just feel for the energy. Hear the words. Take what resonates with you. Don't worry about what doesn't resonate with you. Just give yourself this opportunity to feel your own expansion and maybe an acceleration uh, of new beginnings and some momentum for you. So here we go. We are so pleased and delighted to have the opportunity to speak with you all on this fine and glorious day indeed. We remind you that while our words to you are important, this is a vibrational experience of remembering the truth of who you really are, why you are here, and all that you intended when you chose this magnificent life experience. This is truly a time of acceleration, momentum, new beginnings. Your soul's desires moving into physical form as your reality for the very purpose of your expansion. Your soul's desires are placed in your heart. For the very purpose of your expansion, 
the expansion of love, the expansion of joy, the expansion of wisdom, the expansion of abundance, the expansion of well-being, possibility, and pure potential. It is the time for you to fully step into your soul's desires as your manifested reality because you have chosen You have been preparing and the time is now. And the more you access this place of stillness within you, you let it all come to you. It is in the raising of your vibration and frequency that you align to the acceleration and the momentum that is here for you. If you notice any resistance, breathe and remind yourself of your infinite worth. There is nothing you could ever achieve here in this human experience that would make you more worthy than the infinite worthiness that is your divine nature. And there is nothing that could ever happen that could threaten your infinite worthiness. It is your true divine nature. So at times when you begin to feel acceleration and momentum, You question whether you are worthy of it being this good, this easy, this fun. You question whether you're worthy of feeling so loved and so abundant. You question whether you're really worthy of having the power to create your reality. And we assure you, you are. You are. You are worthy of every dream in your heart. It wouldn't be there if you weren't worthy of it and if you weren't here to experience it as your reality. You would not have the dream in your heart if it did not belong to you. And what belongs to you will come to you in that place of being connected to all that is. That state of oneness where there is no separation from you, the consciousness and the energy that has created everything, you as the powerful creator that you are. The other reason you sometimes have resistance about acceleration and momentum is because you feel out of control. Things are happening so fast. Things are changing. You have called forth that change. Everything is always changing. Energy is always changing form. The awareness and consciousness that is you is summoning forth expansion, which leads to change and new levels of creation. If you can remember to breathe intentionally, deeply, to observe, to come into that place of stillness, And know that everything is happening for you, bringing you into new levels of your power, bringing you into new levels of clarity so that you can create your reality the way you want it to be. As your biggest, boldest, most beautiful dreams manifest in front of your eyes through the experience of true creation, Find that stillness, expand the moment, feel into the fullness, allow yourself to be completely and totally satiated in the moment, in your stillness, in the reality of your biggest, boldest, most beautiful dreams. You are everything you wish to be. You already are. It's all within you. It always will be. We love you. We love you. We love you, dear master. And with that, we are complete. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of our community. If it feels choiceless to you join us for stillness our new channel course 
you can catch several more episodes of Journey of the Master here at our YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. Thank you. So much love to all of you. Have a beautiful rest of your day.